Okay. Reproduction is in plant, huh? uh, The process in plant starts with pollination. Uh, what is pollination? Uh, you must be asking now. Uh, pollination uh, the trans is actually a process of transferring the mature pollen grains. Okay, produced by the anther. Huh? Uh, from the anther to the stigma. So, so pollination. If you go back to the flower, basically, I change the color first. Huh? Change it to blue. So you can see the anther here. Oh, not the anther. So this is the. Uh, this is the. Where is the? Okay, the stigma. These are the stigma. So the anther is here. So this pollen must go to here. Huh? The pollen grains. So to transfer the pollen grain from the anther onto the uh, stigma. So why? Well, that is part of the process of uh, pollination. Eh? Okay, so this is pollination. So again, I repeat the process of transferring mature pollen grains from the anther to stigma. And oh yeah, what is the function of the stigma? I think I have mentioned it here. Uh, stigma is a top part of female flower uh, to collect, okay, uh, collect uh, pollen grains, uh, as you already know. Now, pollination is the first process, and I can see a uh, teacher here show you example of uh, pollen grains uh, produced by the anther of the hibiscus flower. You can see that it looks like a small durian, uh, very small, but inside it contains the male gamete. Uh. Uh, there are more examples of pollen grains, different shapes and different sizes. They are under the microscope. Huh? This is a view under the microscope. Uh, you can see some surfaces are rough, some surfaces are smooth. Uh, there's a differences huh? in all the shapes and sizes. But all of them have one thing in common. All these pollen grains, they have the, uh, the male, uh, they contain the male gamete. Yeah. All right. So far, student, I hope you are following. Now we continue from pollen grains. We look at the types of pollinations. Now, even pollination has different types. You have the self pollination. Uh, self pollination by the onward self means sendiri. Uh, okay. So pollen grains are transferred to the stigma of another flower of the same plant. Oh, transfer of the stigma of another flower. Okay. Yes. This is what happened. You can see this is the same plant. Uh, the, 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 the pollen from there goes to another flower of the same plant. So this is self-pollination. All the pollen grain from the same flower goes to the anther of the same flower, also called self-pollination. Uh, you can basically, yeah. I can see here. Okay, one flower to another different flower, but must be of the same plant. Eh? Okay, pollen grains are transferred to the stigma of the same flower, uh, so pollination. Now, what happened to cross pollination? Now, of course, we evolve two different plants, but of the same species. Eh? Must be the same species. So, so, from plant number one, the anther goes to here. And then all it can go from here to here, from two to one. So this is called cross pollination. How very important concept, huh? Pollination of, uh, of course, is actually the beginning of uh, production. But you have this self pollination and cross pollination, which is actually a very important uh, development in production of plant, of course. Uh, now, ah, uh, of course, we talk a lot about pollination, pollination, but the thing is, how do uh, this is a good uh, uh, question here? How do pollen grains from a plant get transferred from the anther to the stigma? Of course, the plant, the plant cannot do it itself because the plant cannot move, so it has to count. It has to depend on help from other uh, organism, and these other organism they are called pollinating agents. Uh, pollinating agents are agents that helps to pollinate plants. Uh. Example of pollinating agents here: yeah, wind, animals, and insects. You can see uh, wings. These are organism. Of course, this one is just non-living. Uh. 
Okay, so we have wind, we have animals, and say, of course, you can also have another polluting agent called water, but we will not discuss water here. We'll talk about more about wind and insects and animals. Huh? You see, there are differences huh, between this pollination. Even the plant look different when they are pollinated by organisms and pollinated by wind. Uh, that's why this is what we want to discuss next. Huh? Characteristic of flowers pollinated by insects and animals. Uh, look at them. What are they so special? You see, when the animals are pollinating the flower, uh, the pollen grain normally stick. Huh? To the beak or to the body of the animal. So that's why some of the pollen grains are very sticky. Like they are sticky because they are like little durian. Huh? Uh, but what is important, I want to highlight is this one. What are the characteristics of the flower? Huh? See? Big and colorful petal. Colorful means bright yellow, red, or purple, something very colorful. Uh, it produces nectar and has some smell nice huh? to attract all these insects and animals and produce rough and sticky polygon huh? have to huh? because it will stick to the organism they come and collect the nectar actually uh, and during the collection of the nectar uh, this organism helps to pollinate the flower i can see teacher i show you some colorful flowers definitely pollinated by insects you can see some uh, i think it's a sunflower here maybe not huh? But they are all colorful here. Huh? They have red, white, yellow, blue, purple. Okay, very bright colors. Bright petals, big petals. Huh? Uh, okay. So today you can do your own research also on flowers that are pollinated by uh, insects. Huh? Uh, our hibiscus, uh, national flower, is also pollinated by insects. Uh, what happens if they are pollinated by wind? Hmm. When you are pollinated by wind, some of the important characteristics of the flower is they must have oh the flowers are not colorful, normally white or pale. Ah, but they have long furry stigma. Mm. And they have small, smooth, uh, light pollen grains that you can see. So the pollen grains are not rough, they are smooth. Huh? Uh, long filament and style. Okay? So this is the male part. Uh, so this is a female of the flower. So this one, the wind will carry the pollen grain to the female. Uh, one very good example is the corn, uh, jagong. You can see, uh, you can definitely tell that this one will be the male. The enter is here. You can see all this here. So when the wind blows, uh, it will release the pollen grain and the pollen grain will go and blow by the wind and capture by the... Uh, you can see these are the sticky stigma. Uh, uh, Blurry, yeah? You can see? Very like a uh, lot of hair, you know, hair, a new hairstyle from the corn. <laughs> so, this uh, stigma you can see here. A uh, long um, and blurry stigma, uh, the female part here. Uh, okay, gender malic have a long and blurry stigma. So, this is one good example shown by the corn, the corn plant itself. And the flower, you can see. Hmm, I can't even see the flower, they are so small. The flowers are small and not colorful. Huh? Not colorful. Okay. Hmm. Uh, did you show you some more example here? Uh -huh. You see another flower but very small. I, you think you can guess what is all this? Uh, if you guess correctly, it will be the anchor. Because when the wind blow, this this thing will will be uh, uh, moving will be moving uh, like the wind bell uh, or the wind chime, so the pollen grain can uh, release uh, so it will release the pollen grain when the wind blows. Okay, so now flowers pollinated by or plant pollinated by wind have to produce a lot a lot of pollen grains, uh, so that uh, chances of getting pollinated is higher. I think, in my opinion, I think pollination of wind is more, more, uh, more voluntary involved huh, than pollination by insects. Huh? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so there's pollination. So we have a lot of long story about pollination. Now we look at what's so good about cross pollination. Huh? You already know 
learn cross pollination earlier where we have two different uh, two different plants but must be the same species uh. so in cross pollination you read here uh, cross pollination combine the genetic materials from two parent plants of the same species and what's so good about it because when during cross pollination this ensure the, the offspring uh, the product uh, inherit means receive good characteristic from both parents so the good thing the good part of uh, parent one is given to the of products parent two also give the, the good parts uh, characteristic of the of the parent uh, to the offspring so which means the uh, offspring produce will be better in terms of uh, comparing to the parents uh. mm. of course what is good and what is bad that really depends on uh, I don't know maybe the farmer can decide uh, or maybe nature can decide but anyway cross pollination well they produce healthier plants uh, which can adapt to change in the environment and the healthier plants are more resistant to disease or pests. They give new variety. Yeah, variety. Oh, uh, variety means, for example, look at rice. Rice uh, can be pollinated cross pollination, can produce different types of rice, fruits, or so on. Uh, uh. And of course, all these will produce good quality seeds. Good quality seeds will give you good quality plant uh, in return. And the production, of course, is also good. <laughs> Everything is good uh, in cross pollination. So, so don't worry about the other one, self pollination. Uh, self pollination basically uh, is the opposite of all this. Uh, not as healthier, no variety, maybe not so good quality seeds. Uh? Okay. And application cross pollination is very common uh, in every country, including Malaysia. In Malaysia, cross pollination is used in agriculture. To produce better crops and higher quality crops or fruits. Here we can some example uh, palm oil, our export uh, to other country, papaya. You can see all the different uh, variety of papaya. Uh. So see we have to get a good thing here. A good uh, good uh, thing. Sweet, more flesh uh, for the palm oil, more fruits. More flesh, uh, thinner cells, easy to process. Corn, uh, all this lah, uh, can read it in page. So table four point six. Uh. Basically, if you look at it, all these are the good things about uh, cross pollination. And of course, don't forget ah uh, this one. I think all of you, uh, students here who are looking at this video, durians. Uh, we have Musang King, we have D forty, we have uh, all all these different type of durians. And you think? You see all these good things about durians? Uh, they must have come from uh, cross pollination to produce the best fruit, the best smelling durian, the biggest durian. Uh, all this, huh? Okay, students. So this end part one huh, of our reproduction of plants. Okay, so we we'll stop here. Thank you.